Hi guys, it's understandable for a nation to back an ally, but when that friend breaks international law, the question has to be, where is the red line? Lord Cameron, the Foreign Secretary, was interviewed by Kay Burley on Sky News about Iran's response to the bombing of its embassy in Damascus by trying to talk around the reality of this. He ignored the point raised and responded by focusing on the Iranian response. But if Israel had not engaged first, we would not be seeing the latter. This point was either lost on or ignored by the Foreign Secretary. Have a listen to this. Is it bad judgment or good judgment to hit uh, Iranian sovereign territory in Damascus? No, that was a ma that's something the Israelis decided to do. Yeah, we haven't good. made a... I know, well, I, let me, I'll, I'll answer the question, which is I, I can completely understand the frustration the Israelis feel when they look at uh, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard and they look at the terrible things that they have done all over the world, including the support they give to Hamas. And, of course, Hamas were responsible for October the 7th, and that is where all of this begins. So you can completely understand um, the frustration. Yeah, but um, what about Iran's frustration at part of its sovereign territory being flattened? Well, I would argue there is a, a massive degree of difference between what Israel did in Damascus and, as I said, 301 weapons being launched by the state of Iran at the state of Israel. For the first time, a state-on-state -state attack. 101 ballistic missiles, 36 cruise missiles, 185 drones. That is a degree of difference. Yeah. And I think a reckless and dangerous thing for Iran to have done. And I think the whole world can see all these countries that have somehow wondered, well, you know, what is the true nature of Iran? It's there okay. in black and white. What would Britain do if a hostile nation flattened one of our consulates? Well, we would take, you know, we would take the very strong action. And Iran would say that that's what they did? Well, what they did, as I said, was a so massive they, attack. So they, they were, were right think, to respond, but they overreacted, is well, that what you're I, saying? I'm, what I'm saying they is that the, right atta the, attack, the attack they carried out was on a very large scale, much bigger than but people they accepted. they have a right to respond? Well, countries have a right to respond when they feel they've suffered uh, an aggression. Of course they do. But look at the scale of that response. Had those weapons not so been shot right down, respond, but they there, just could have been, there could have been thousands of casualties, including civilian casualties. I think that's a really important point to take into account. My God, he's, he's supposed to be the clever one in the cabinet. So, sovereign territory has been destroyed, and he's, he tried to get around the problem by, you know, saying, well, you, yes, you have the right to respond, but you shouldn't respond in this way. They responded in the way that they, they saw fit. This is part of the problem here. And a part of the problem as well is that you have the British government, you know, engaging in mental gymnastics to defend what's considered illegal under international law. You're not supposed to attack embassies. Embassies get attacked. I'm not saying that they don't get attacked, and this is a precedent. But they, but it's under international law, it's illegal to attack an embassy. Now, another issue that wasn't brought up here, but was brought up in another part of the interview, is how the RAF were involved in defending Israel to a certain extent. They were helping the US, who were helping Israel at the time, to stop some of these weapons, uh, which were eventually destroyed by the, the Iron Dome anyway. Now, there's a risk that RAF aircraft could have been hit. There's a risk that some of the pilots could have been killed. For what? To help Israel when Israel has attacked a, 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 sovereign, a piece of sovereign uh, territory in Damascus. Israel should not have attacked that, uh, that embassy. David Cameron knows this. He just he can't say it. He's sort of criticized, but he can't come out and say they shouldn't have done this. This was wrong. Because then he'd have to admit, then he'd have to admit it was wrong under an international law. And then he'd have to say that Israel has broken international law. Now, it's also interesting that, you know, RAF aircraft were out there defending uh, Israel when Israel has the Iron Dome at the same time as Russian rockets hit uh, Ukraine and there were casualties in Ukraine. Wouldn't it have made more sense for the RAF to be in Ukraine defending Ukraine because Ukraine don't, don't actually have an Iron Dome system instead of defending Israel when Israel attacked Dema uh, the embassy in Damascus? Netanyahu is going rogue here. He's not interested in, in 
operating within international law, it seems. And the British government and the Americans seem to be dragged along because, well, they can't do anything else, it seems. It's absolutely pathetic. And, and now you have the foreign secretary on TV trying to defend what seems to be a breach in international law. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.